When was the first time you realized that a perpetually single friend of yours was in fact single for a very good reason? I have a friend that is kind of big, but he's really nice and funny. So I figured it wouldn't be too hard for him to find someone. He would get into a lot of relationships for like a week and break up. It was always framed as the women being teases using him for free food. One night, he brought a date to the bar we were at, and he was just being so aggressively sexual with her. It got worse as he got drunker. At one point, he was openly talking about wanting to fuck her in the parking lot. We all said, whoa, Inna, you went too far. Way and she threw up her hands and left. And he looked at us like he had no idea why she left. I know exactly the reason, but it's a bit sad. He's physically disabled and doesn't believe women would want to date him as a result. Every time my buddy gets drunk, which is frequent being from a small Midwestern town, he pisses on himself or on something else. Broken-hearted, afraid of being vulnerable again and rather be alone than try again and feel that way ever again. My best friend was single for a long time. Turns out he was gay. He hasn't been single since he came out, lol. Well, I have a long-time friend that is very attractive and funny and I could never figure out why he'd always have one-night stands but never committed to a relationship. Until we traveled together. Then I found out why. He's a very annoying, controlling and bossy person. Probably because of his protective mother. Anyway, love that guy. My roommate and old friend is a big guy, but he carries it well. He is a good dude, and he is smart. Problem is his self-esteem is wrecked. And at this point he says he is happier alone. I don't believe this. He has obsessed about women who were not worthy before. And he has a bad image of his own body due to a few bad dates. What he doesn't see is that his worth is high. He has good morals and interests. In the end he's secluded and focused on gaming. And doesn't try to date anymore. I feel for him. And it makes me feel bad bringing my girlfriend around. Or even displaying how easily I meet people with basic effort and a positive attitude. I just started dating a guy like this. Big guy. Carries it well. But low self-esteem. I met him through a close friend. He's good friends with her boyfriend. And when she was setting us up together, she told me from the start that he was very inexperienced and very self-conscious on a lot of things. He's so sweet. And I really hope things go well between us. But I can totally see what she means. It's interesting trying to navigate. I can tell he's honestly trying, so I don't mind also putting in the work. But in the meantime, we are just going at his pace. He's a virgin at 28 because his standards are way too high. He also hasn't really matured past 15. Once knew a guy who would see a cute girl and I would encourage him to talk to her. He would then make up a story about how she wouldn't live up to his standards and she'd just disappoint him. Then he would turn around and complain he couldn't find anyone. He cheated on, with multiple women, and broke the heart of someone who should have been his dream partner. She was as one of the kindest and sweetest people I've known. When he was found out, and we, edit, her, myself, and my lovey wife, were all upset. He didn't get what the problem was. She is now one of my wife's best friends. I don't talk to him anymore. I am the perpetually single friend. The very good reason is probably my mental health. There's something wrong with me as a person, but no one I know in real life has ever been willing to tell me what it is. It's not up to friends or family to be an armchair psychiatrist and diagnose you. It's up to you to seek out a therapist to talk through your problems. You also need to talk to your doctor. They can sort out some ground-level stuff and then refer you to a proper mental health professional to give you a proper diagnosis. Then between counseling and maybe even medication you can finally deal with the problem. Having a mental health issue does not mean there is something wrong with you as a person. It only means that you have a health issue that needs to be addressed. I wouldn't think anything less of a diabetic with insulin dependence. Mental health issues can be addressed, both with medication and therapy counseling. And counseling can be highly effective with many things. When he got super jealous of me hanging out with my girlfriend. Jealousy is like wearing a hockey mask and carrying a machete. Women will run. The second he got a girlfriend. We were so happy for him, because his wife had cheated and they divorced and he was single for years. The second he got a girlfriend he turned into a controlling, manipulative, annoying a-hole. We were all shocked. Nobody had ever seen him act that way. Relationship failed. He's single again. Wife cheated. 
so him being controlling makes sense. Whether or not that's excusable behavior, that's another story. LOL this reminds me of an ex-boyfriend who told me the story of how his ex left him for another guy when she was temporarily living with her family, and he couldn't understand why she would do that blah blah. And then after I broke up with him and moved out he kept acting like we were still together. It was definitely an oh light bulb moment. My good friend has an abysmal taste in partners. They are a fantastic full package of a person and I was so confused at how they kept attracting ending up with these horrible people. I then realized they reminded me of one of my parents, forgiving to the point of enabling and a chronic people pleaser. It's a shame, they are great but won't get a decent partner until they learn to put themselves first. Dude had a girlfriend handed to him on a silver platter, and it only lasted a few weeks. Even though he was super interested in her, he broke it off or so he told me over reasons unknown to me. Said he didn't want to talk about it cause he broke her heart yada yada. He's just a fucking weirdo and has anger problems. Doesn't want to talk about shit ever and sees himself as having some sort of grandiose importance. Maybe a knock. I don't know. He's the nice guy type. Every time he dates someone, he'd keep talking about what to do so they'd have sex with him. He's not ugly, on the contrary he's leaning towards attractive side but never have a girlfriend. One time the girl he was dating came over and they were cuddling in his bed. When he started stimulating her, his words not mine, the girl suddenly just up and left, he said. She also proceeded to block him. He told me this story with all the usual. Woe is me. Women just use me. Why do I fall in love with bitches so easy? Etc. What's worse is that he sent a letter to her, physical letter, saying how pretty she is and how he wished she could see they were good together. He came to her place and slipped the letter under her door. Three days no response, he wrote a poem, along with the same letter, and sent it to her email. The next day he uploaded his poem to their shared Google Drive work project. Despite the advice I F gave him, because he'd asked first, he continued this behavior to other girls he dated. He also mansplains a lot. I shared a TED talk about why modern day bra has bad fit on women's boobs on my story. The speaker is an expert and has a master degree in women's lingerie design, and is also a sports bra business owner. He replied my story and asked for the link, so I gave him. Few minutes later, he chat me again, saying, This is gonna sound weird, but I feel like I know better than her. He then, explained to me how he knows different types of bra cup that fits boob shape just right. He explained it with great confidence, despite never having worn a bra for a day in his life. Never read anything about bra and doesn't even know how to make a bra. He explained it to me, a woman who has to wear bra since fifth grade, who also has a degree in fashion design, after watching a video of an expert explaining the same topic with years of study. But sure, he knows better. He's single for the same reason I'm single. Anxious and afraid of getting rejected compounded by the fact that he lives in a small town. But I acknowledge my issues and work to fix them while he doesn't. I give him supportive words and tell him what I'm doing to improve myself. I'm glad to help him out, even if that means calling him a stubborn a-hole at times. I'm the single friend. I'm single because I haven't even tried to go on a date for like a decade. I've been asked a few times too. The pandemic has been pretty helpful. I'm arrow and I'm happy. Took a long time for me to realize that I wasn't broken. I have three very good examples. Studied with a girl who was a 10-10. Looked like the typical blonde, next door from a 90s movie. Went to dinner with her once. Well, she told me that all modern medicine is bullshit, and all you need is a walk in the park to get cured by energy. Then she sniffed my hair to see if we would be compatible. I don't think I need to say more. One of my closest friends is an average-looking dude, but he comes from a very wealthy family and owns a big-ass house. Still every girl leaves him. Why? because he is an functioning alcoholic and a man-child. Another friend of mine is an attractive, well-educated dude, but he treats women like shit. Basically he mets them, acts like he is completely in love, which makes them fall even harder for him and after he banged them a few times, he breaks up with them for the most ridiculous reasons, BC they don't have a certain degree, BC of their family heritage or some shit. A good friend is now in his late thirties, has never had a girlfriend and a virgin. A lot of my girlfriends have met him and the consensus seems to be he's a good-looking guy. Problem, I believe, stems from an alcoholic father, being raised a devout Christian and probably, 
being a closet homosexual. The childhood trauma really do be out here making it hard for people. It's me I'm the single friend. I'm 5 feet 4 inches at 23 years old, and I'm pretty sure I have some type of mental health issue. I use my humor as a coping mechanism for feeling down all the time and making other people laugh makes me happy. I live with a verbally abusive mother who doesn't have a job and a narcissistic, schizophrenic, bipolar, racist, piece of shit uncle who refuses to not only get help, but also refuses to work or contribute to the monthly household expenses. I help my dad with the bills because he can't afford them on his own. My life is an absolute train wreck and there's some nights where I go to bed and I hope I don't wake up. I'm happy for my friend and his girlfriend is amazing and I hope they're together for the long haul. I just like that for myself too. It's pathetic that the most I've ever done with a woman is hug. But that's where I'm at in life. I strongly urge you to seek out some help. Most cities have programs that offer free or largely discounted mental health services. People get depression because they feel stuck in a situation that seems like it has no escape. For your own sake you need to move out. I imagine that would be rather hard but you need to make it work somehow. Reach out to friends and other family. Things can get better, but not while you live there. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.